Hey, raindrops. Yes, come through. We got merch. Finally, Carlos King is giving y'all merch. We got raindrops. Allegedly. Come on. Allegedly mugs. Allegedly t-shirts. We have it all. Make sure you go on carloskingshop.com. That's right. carloskingshop.com. Pick it up. Tell a friend. Phone a friend. And let's celebrate this all together. Now get into this video and make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. And hit what? Yes, the notification button so you don't miss an episode. See ya. Do you feel Cardi B has the career you wanted? No. I feel like Cardi B has the career that she deserves and I have the one that I deserve. How did you feel when people tried to pitch you two against each other, being both from Love and Hip Hop, and people were saying, Cardi did one or two seasons and Bloom and is now doing Super Bowl commercials, and Jocelyn's on Zeus. Jocelyn owns her own TV show. Jocelyn makes more money than a lot of these ladies make. I stream my show and, and, and I own the IP. So every month, I don't have to go to work. I still get that check. Jocelyn sell out shows, tours. And I have a tour every six months. I don't know about a lot of ladies. Um, and I don't like people comparing Cardi with me or even another lady with another lady. That's so bummy. Like, she's her, I'm me, she's she, who she is, and we're all successful. And comparing people to each other is, is stupid because everybody's different. And people got to stop comparing people's success to other people's success. If, you're, if, if Cardi's successful, Jocelyn's successful, Megan is successful, you know, whoever else is successful, that's successful. Like, Timing will see who's the best. Only time can tell who is going to be the greatest. Not now. Because now is now. Tomorrow is tomorrow. And 10 years from now is 10 years from now. And then we can come back and revisit that question. Just how I feel. No, it's smart. Again, you have defy the odds because a lot of people some have, but a lot of people haven't made it beyond Love and Hip Hop. And... It's only two people. It's Cardi and Jocelyn. Because I feel like if anybody else on Love and Hip Hop wanted to, I think that they could have. I think everybody that would want to do something bigger or different will have been able to do so. Especially at the moment that we all did it. I did not only just go to do only my own show, Jocelyn's Cabaret. I went to doing Star. With Lee Daniels, I went to... He loves you. And he loved me. He loves me to this day. And I quit doing Star. I could have been one of the biggest actresses in the world right now. Bigger than J-Lo, uh, Samaya Haggard. I could have been one of them. I quit all my acting jobs to come down to Miami and do the cabaret. You don't know where the acting gig would have taken me, but I didn't want to do it. I believed in my cabaret more than I did. And I told Lee Daniels when he called me, like, look, I love you. I appreciate you for giving me the, giving me the opportunity. But unfortunately, I have to follow my heart. I told you that. I was going to say, when, I want I, people, when that happened. I want people to know this. This is a true story. You and I were working on the cabaret. Lee Daniels called you and said, I want you to star on Star. Not a guest appearance. He wanted you to be a series regular. Because I did a few episodes. Yeah. And then I got pregnant with Bonnie and left. And after the pregnancy, he called me like, can you please come back? I want you to be a main character. I'm like, Leah, I can't. He was like, but why? Which you remind me of him so much. <laughs> I don't know if other people tell you. Yeah, 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 I, I, I get other that. People yeah. tell you that. But you remind me of him so much. Yeah. But I just could not do it, Carlos. I needed to see out the cabaret. And mm. I think I made my right, my right decision. Cause you I'm on my fourth it. season. I'm on my fourth season, and season one checks are still hefty. Put it this way, I still pay rent, mortgage, clothing, everything with season one check. Seuss is pretty nice to me. And I've made my right decisions. I, I think I make a lot more money than a lot of the girls that 
are out there. I'm, I'm an owner. And everything is in-house, so it's a little bit easier. We make a lot more money. And mm -hmm. it, get, it allows me to be a better creator and a better artist because I don't have anybody trying to, like, guide me or do this or do that or do this or do that. I actually have, you know, I, I negotiate my own contract. I'm calling next. Yo, what is a million dollars, bitch? You better give me that five million. What is this shit? A lot of bitches can't do that. I'm going to hold my nuts. And if I wasn't married, I'd line them up. <laughs> and you know what they're going to do when they get lined up? What? Whatever I say. <laughs> Whatever I tell them to do. They, be ha they better be happy I am a decent married woman. And I love my husband. My husband is amazing. I would not want to be married to anybody else. My husband is great. Without my husband, it's another reason, another reason why I'm able to do the cabaret and perform is because of my husband. He makes all my music. I don't write on anybody else's tracks. I don't go in the studio with anybody. I believe in my husband. I work with him, and I love he, his work. I would make, would make a, a great duo. And he, what, what I love about Ballistic is, because I've been around you guys, obviously, he really loves you. Well, why not? He, he loves Bonnie as if, he also gave birth to her. Like, he, because the thing about it is this, most women in your position, a boss, a CEO, desirable by men and women, right? Um, it could be a lot for a man. It could be a lot for a man to be like, to become insecure. And what I, what I know about Ballistic is he's very secure about you. He allows you to be sexual. He allows your sexuality to be seen. I remember watching Keep It Up With The Kardashians. And Kim Kardashian was getting ready to go to the Met Gala. And she had this outfit that was showing her curves. This is on camera. And Kanye said, it's too sexy. And Kim said to Kanye, you built me up to be this sex symbol. And now you have a problem with it. And he said, it's different now. You're my wife. And she said, because you're on this journey that you're on, I'm not there yet. He stormed the room. Like a crybaby girl. <laughs> cry baby, cry baby, suck your mama. So, Belinda. But let's used to try to be like, oh, that shirt is sexy, or those pants are too short, or where you going with that. He's a Virgo. So, my T for him is to ignore him, and it makes him more riled up. And he shuts up there. Because if you complain too much, you're not going to get no p. If you act stupid and stuck up, I'm not going to suck your if you, if you give me too much of a hard time, I'm not going to love you and be your wife. So that's on you, Ballista. So I think he learned how to just be like, OK, this is my wife. I met her sexy. I'm, she's an entertainer. She comes home to me every night. I trust her. I know she's not doing anything. He knows my pass, passwords. I leave my phones around the house. I go to yoga and, for hours and leave the house, and I might not have my phones, because I don't care. I just leave, right? Uh, and he knows. I mean, where am I going to go? I mean, yeah, I can be with a billionaire. I can get any man I, I want to. Every man desires me. But I love my husband. Does Stevie J and Ballista get along? Yeah. They get along. I mean, I don't really think Stevie has a, a choice. Do you and Stevie get along? I mean, I don't really see him. Uh, Bonnie sees him and his other kids, uh, but I get along with him. He don't bother me. I'm not thinking about him. He's got enough problems for me to even think about that. How does it feel seeing it through his film marriage? Because didn't you do an interview for them? Ah! <laughs> 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 bitch. Uh, uh, bitch. Not just trying to go on me. <laughs> oh, baby, look at you. How wonderful. Tell me, you were there when it was so good. No, Stevie J and Faith are divorced, yes. Did you have anything to do with it? They're divorced? No. Oh. <laughs> You're so fucking <laughs> You are so oh. shady. Shout out to, um, what's her name again? Oh, Faith Evans? Faith Evans. Oh, honey. Did you and Faith ever get along? I've never had a problem with her. She was. Well, I was probably still with him, so I had no idea. So 
But it was so good because it allowed me just to leave, you know? She really just saved my life. I have a lot to thank to Faith Evans. She, too bad for her and too good for me. How things work, huh? Have to be smart and ready and eyes open for every opportunity. So when that street is open, you can drive by it or run by it and get to that door. Were you hurt by that? No. Okay. No. No. I've never really been hurt by a man doing anything to me because like I said, I've always been like the... The dominant one. Yeah, like I'm gonna, I'm riding the, I'm driving the bus. <laughs> you know? So, I definitely be hurt if my husband tried to divorce me and leave me because I do love my husband. Mm -hmm. But um, I probably get over it. What, what was beautiful about you, like I said, is your confidence because at one point in time, didn't Stevie try to get full custody of Bonnie? Yeah. And as a mother, did, but did that like piss you off, hurt you, or made you angry? Yeah, at momentarily, yeah. Yeah, momentarily it did. Why was he trying to do that in the first place? Um, I think he was just being an asshole, to be real with you. And I, I went to go do College Hill. Not College Hill, I'm sorry. The boot camp. A oh, marriage oh, boot wait. camp. Yeah. Yes. After, remember, you got the yeah. interview with Lemmy. Uh-huh. A day, a day after I left the boot camp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next day, they remember? I remember it all that. It was literally the next yeah. day. I, my life is like a movie. That's why I can't wait to the book. Yeah. Because it's like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Literally the next day. Um, you know, when we was in the book camp, he just like, he wanted to go pick up Bonnie. I left Bonnie with my family in Fort Lauderdale. And um, I was like, you can pick her up, but like, you know, whatever, whatever. But he was on some shit and he tried to get custody. He did gain custody for like a week or two. And then when I went back to court, because you know, you have hearings and you have to keep going back. Because if, if, you, if you miss the judge, the judge is going to give custody to the, to the parent that didn't miss the court. It's that simple. If you have a court day for, uh, for, for a child custody and you just happen to meet court because you didn't know you had to go to court, that judge is going to sign up. The reason why I got saved by the bill and the process didn't go, it didn't prolong was because the, like two weeks after, we had another hearing. Right after, because I had to finish the bookend. Bookends was two weeks. Mm -hmm. Two weeks, I was there for 14 days and I could not leave. I signed the contract. If I left, no money and I would have been sued. So I had to literally go do the bookend through there. But you know, I was, I was, I knew I was going to be fine. Went to court the second time. He missed court. So you know what I told the judge? I, I, in Atlanta, with my lawyer sitting there, my lawyer was quiet. You know, lawyers don't like you to talk because they, want, they mm -hmm. want to slow down the process so then they can get more money. But I spoke up and I told the judge, I said, so you mean to tell me I missed court the first day and you give my, this man that's never been around that my daughter don't even know who he is custody? But he not here today. I'm expecting custody back. And she signed it back. She was like, I don't want you to think... I don't want nobody thinking I'm saying favoritism, because I use that word, favoritism. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me find out you have favoritism for that man, because I clearly recall you gave that man full custody of that baby, or temporary full custody, because mm -hmm. that's what it is, temporary, until they assess the situation, or you go to uh, you know, your court day or your um, trial. Um, I'm like, I clearly remember you gave him full custody because you said that I missed court, when I didn't know I had court because he did all this behind my back. I said, so I'm supposed to cut to the back. And she gave me cut to the back that same day. She called him, his phone was off, he didn't pay his phone bill. Because they was trying to find him. The judge called him right then and there. Like, where are you? And the phone, no, no, no phone bill was paid. Uh, the judge called his wife. She didn't know where he was at. I'm sure he was having a rendezvous some day that night. That's how I got her back. So. It was, it was a temporarily painful thing, but like I always do, I take care of my business. And I got my baby back and they have a great relationship. He comes around, his other kids come around. I love Bonnie's brothers and sisters. Oh, good. Because I'm speaking of Stevie's kids, mm -hmm. because they love Bonnie. They always hang out with Bonnie. Like I hang out with Bonnie's sisters and go have drinks and stuff with them. Bonnie's sisters are only, one of them is only six years younger than me. Oh, wow. So I hang out with them. I go have drinks with them and everything when they come see Bonnie.
They put me on drinks. Oh, drink this, Jocelyn, do this. It's the weirdest shit ever. I'm like, how am I hanging out with Bonnie's, my daughter's sisters, having cocktails with my daughter's sisters? <laughs> that is insane to me. It's insane. You also were offered a full-time position on The Real. Yes. And you turned that down. Why? I feel like I was too young to do that. And I really wanted to do music. I got hits. Do it like it should be day. A huge hit. Hey, Issa Rae Insecure. <laughs> no, Jocelyn, people can say what they want. No, this is real tea. No, I don't think, this is the thing, I don't think people understand this. Do it like it's your birthday, you wrote it. You get the publishing. When people play- I get good checks for BMI. Oh, listen, I, I want people to know this. Cause listen, and this is no shade to anybody else. We're not here to shade people. But there's other artists- <laughs> I don't. Hi. <laughs> there's other artists who may have a big hit. Um, they have ghostwriters. They don't own the publishing. The money got to be split between 25 people before they see a penny. Only my money is split with me and my husband. I don't think people understand that. Do it like it's your birthday is yours. You own all of it. So when the songs are played at the club, the phones, the streaming. TV. E TV. Not just, it's, it, it was Not it's a cure boy. You got the, the um, what's the other show that I did? P, P Valley. Valley. And everywhere, everywhere. Every you, show. I think I pay like 10 times from TV shows. All that money goes in your pocket. So you turn down Star, created by Lee Daniels, you turned down the opportunity to be on an Emmy Award winning daytime talk show. Honey, I did not have time to sit out there with them old ass bitches talking about the other bitch. Honey, I got things to do and it ain't them. You didn't like it. I was like, thank you, but y'all could keep you at 50,000 a month. Now, honey, I made 50,000 in a day. They wanted to pay me 50,000 a month, which was the contract that they sent me. And I just didn't think it was like, I just feel like to I was To live too in LA. I, I, I feel like I was too young to take that type of job. And still to this day, I feel like I'm too young to take a job like that. That just was one of them. With Star, I feel like I needed to do the cabaret. So I couldn't do that job. I turned on so many jobs for believing in the music and the cabaret, but it's paying off. But that's the point but I want people off. to know. That's paying off. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. And this is me creating shows and working with stars. A lot of them are afraid to leave a situation because, because they, may, they may have the dream. And you know this, you know this. Everybody before you and right now had a dream. But they're afraid of leaving the comfortability of that, of that particular position. situation, position, and believe in themselves. I don't think people understand. I don't know a lot of people who turned down a daytime talk show offer, an uh, acting offer, to, to, to say, I want to do this thing called Jocelyn's Cabaret, and I want to do music. And you own the intellectual property. People don't understand the, the significance of that. You're not this dumb Puerto difficult. Rican girl. You're not Very this, difficult. I know, you're not this dumb Puerto Rican girl from the streets who got lucky. No luck you, there. You did it because you believed in yourself. You left a big show. You left these big opportunities. And when we talk about these um, investments and all this other stuff, you invested in yourself and you're reaping the benefits of it. Many That's years. major. Issa Rae called you and said, yeah. Issa Rae loves you. Yeah, I love her too. She's the best. See, I didn't want you to cry, bitch, so I don't blame me for it. I know, stop it. You always get me here. It's just, it's. But what, but what, what it's, makes you emotional it's... thinking about that, me, me, me saying that to you? Like, it's like a real dream come true. It's like a real dream come true that only in my deepest dream that I can see it through. And it makes me emotional because I see it through. And a lot of people don't get to see it through. And it's hurtful. Bitches like Issa, not only did she play my song on there, she paid me to put the cabaret on rap shit, her other show. So it's like, 
you get certain people, or like yourself, that make a phone call and say, hey, give Jocelyn the meeting. She needs Jocelyn's cabaret. And now we got Jocelyn's cabaret. It's certain people that make a phone call or that put you out there that helps you get to that position. And she's one of them. Mm -hmm. She doesn't fucking know me. It's not a right now, fucking mammy. All of them know. From playing my songs on the media, Doja Cat, playing my duet like it should be there. Everybody for their birthday. Everybody. Everybody. If you had a birthday, Nicki Minaj, Cardi, all of them had posted, do it like it should be there. The City Girls or uh, Twitter or anything, anything, anything about my songs. That one, every night of the week, Vegas, which is another one of my biggest hits. I want to ride, I want to ride. It's hard to see it through. And it's emotional because a lot of people don't see it through because it's so fucking difficult. And it's so big <laughs> that a lot of people are like, but they will never give that to me because they didn't give it to anybody else. And you will always say to me, and this is true, you will always say to me, but Carlos, we can be the first. Carlos, I can be the first. I can be the first. Just because, just because they haven't done it to anybody else. Don't mean they're not gonna do it for us. That's you, but you will always say that to me. You will always say that to me. You are a genius when it comes to, no one knows the Jocelyn Hernandez brand better than you. And when you were creating Jocelyn's Cabaret, you would send me videos of yourself practicing in your room and say, what you think about this? And I remember sending you this um, Apollonia Beyonce mix and I said, you remember bitch? Which I love Apollonia, yes. bitch. They used to tell me when I used to be a stripper that all the guys would come in and tell me I look like her. Vanity. Vanity six. They would always say, you look just like Vanity. All the older guys. And I'm like, really, who is Vanity? You know, cause I'm in yeah, my early like 21, 22. I'm like, well, who's Vanity? Until I Google Vanity and I see the three girls and I'm like, damn, I might do look like her. Yeah. No, I would send you inspiration. You'd be like, oh my God, this is dope. And I would say, I see it. I remember being in Vegas and I sent you, I, I was watching this Vegas show and I, and I video recorded it. And I said, I could see you on this stage. And you said, oh my God, this is good. Take more videos. I want people to know you really, you really did the work to get to where you are. For years. For years. We TV turned down your show. To come back and license it which I thought it was random. <laughs> I was like, now why would y'all come back and pay me when you guys had the first dip in it through Carlos K? But you know what, Carlos? I feel like it was a little bit explosive, too explosive, back when we started doing yeah. uh, the cabaret yeah. for WeTV. Yeah, absolutely. Because WeTV, I feel like, just got loud. Mm -hmm. And still, they, 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 mm -hmm. they drive a thin line. Absolutely. They like, you know, they, they're like, a strict line. So I just feel like even though they spend the money, they allow you to do the the pilot and come to Miami and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. I just feel like it was too loud for daytime TV at that moment, which yes. was in 2019. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I know is 2023. We're almost in 24. So that was almost five years ago. Mm -hmm. But still, in a year or two, things have changed drastically when it comes down to reality TV. Yes. Especially with a lot of streaming networks being available now because you're able to do a little bit more rough things and go for the gusto. Yeah. You know, and I just felt like we TV just wasn't ready for that at that moment. And they came back and said, we want to license it from you and you got a bigger check. I thought it was so funny. I'm like, you guys are so dumb. That's God. To, like, to, to, because when it was that we TV, you didn't own it. You own it now. Well, we did. we did. We did have ownership on the, pa yes, on the paperwork. The paperwork. But you were able to license it, which is a better deal. It is different. To, I feel like we TV would have been different. Yeah. A little bit more stricter. I wasn't going to be able to be allowed to do how I do it now, which I'm free to just do how I want to do it. Hey, Raindrops. Yes. Come through. We got merch. Finally, Carlos King is giving y'all merch. We got raindrops. Allegedly. Come on, allegedly mugs, allegedly t-shirts. We have it all. 
make sure you go on carlosKingshop.com. That's right, carlosKingshop.com. Pick it up, tell a friend, phone a friend, and let's celebrate this all together. Now get into this video and make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and hit what? Yes, the notification button so you don't miss an episode. See ya. I did not know. I was, first of all, I did not know I was going to be so emotional when I came to your show. Why? This and these are not tears of crocodiles. No, it's a safe space. I want people to know the person behind the personality. You are a good person. You are a sweet person. Now look, when we watch Jocelyn Cabaret, you be reading the girls and all that stuff, people may not think that. How do you feel when people say, Jocelyn, you are so mean to the girls? You're supposed to empower them. I do. Giving them an opportunity to go on tour with me, after I worked for 15 years, when people told me I wasn't going to ever be nothing with the music, I wasn't ever going to have a hit, I wasn't ever going to go on tour, after they compared me to every lady that's successful, after they told me that I wasn't good enough, if you go on a tour with me to come dance with me, I have to be hard on you. Do I talk down on them and be hard on them? Absolutely. But that's how I talk to my bitches. Hold this, hold that, thrifted this, thrifted that, ugly bitch, ugly that, broke bitch, broke that. That's just how we talk. That's the slang. That's the love. That's the heart. Obviously, they come in every season. I got thousands. I got two, three, four, five thousand ladies every season auditioning to go on tour with me. Carlos, I sell, I sell tickets. Hoes don't sell tickets. Hoes got a label, they push them, still can't sell a ticket with 50 people in the, in, in, in the room. So when you're talking I sell to a thousand, two, three thousand tickets any given day and people come see me and perform. And they also come see the ladies perform. So when I'm down and hard on the ladies, I want them to be the best. What about the fighting? I'm a fighter. So we- I don't think I'm gonna ever stop. And every bitch that tried me or tried or think that they could do anything or go against me or, or, or try to challenge me, we're not going in the ring, bitch. We're going to the streets. What happened in this infamous video where it was you, Big Lex, fighting, police arrested, you calling her name like you know that hoe. You don't know that hoe. I don't know Don't her. even know where she come from, who birthed her, or nothing. What, what was going on? Because a lot of people felt like, is she high? Is she on drugs? They felt like you zoned out. I definitely and zoned out, not on drugs. Do I like to get high? Absolutely, everybody do. I'm just the first one to admit it. High off what? I, for whatever I want to get high off. It's really, at this point, it's really nobody's business. If I want to have, if I want to go out and have a good time with my friends, I should be able to do that. But because it's Jocelyn, they make it a bigger deal than what it is. Everybody's on the same shit. If, if right now, if we all get drug tests today, I'm gonna see who passed the mother drug test. Right now, please bring a drug test person right here, right now, or anywhere. It doesn't have to be personally in this room. Anywhere in the room where it's full of people, because everybody loves to point the finger. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't. Put it this way, when I got into that fight that day, I wasn't even high on weed. Before I go on stage, I don't smoke weed, I don't drink, I don't do nothing. I'm focused. But I'm going to always defend myself when I have to. And that ain't gonna never stop. Are you afraid of going to jail for that? I already went to jail for that twice. What's going on now? Do you have to go back to court? Was, was it two felony charges or something? I got a bunch of felonies. I got a bunch of charges on me. But at the end of the day, when the judge see the truth and how everything came about, I feel like I'll be OK. You're not worried? No, I feel like I defended myself. OK. So I'm not worried about the outcome. No, I'm not at all. Do you? sometimes feel like, hmm, what will Bonnie Bella think when she watches this? Hey, Bonnie Bella is gonna say her mom is an icon. I take care of Bonnie Bella. Bonnie Bella knows what I do and how I operate. She's seen me in the act. She knows mommy is nothing to be played with. 
Mommy go and get that money. And she loves her mom. I don't feel no type of way. I haven't done anything that any other person haven't done. The difference between me, me and the regular people is that I get paid and that I'm the princess. These are regular people and they don't get paid. That's the difference between me and everybody else. When I want to smoke a blunt, oh, she's getting hot. When I want to drink, oh, she's getting drunk. When I want to go party, oh, she outside not taking care of body. When I take a poop, oh, she farted. When I take a shit, oh, she just took a shit. When I burp, oh, the bitch just burp. Damn. But one thing you did. Why me and not everybody else? Why, why when I do things that every other regular human being in life do, they get a pass? Why when I do it? It's murder she wrote. Why? Somebody got to be the bad guy. I'll be the bad guy. But when I'm being the bad guy, I'm getting paid. And there's no bitch outside doing reality TV that gets more money than I do. Nobody. Were you disappointed during College Hill when you and Amber Rose got into that fight that you both got expelled, although she put the hands on you She first? attacked me. No, I wasn't disappointed because I still got my million dollars. And I took my black ass home a week early. Why she over there getting twenty thousand dollars? Cause she mad cause she don't want to be black. But your mama birthed you with a black pussy. Bitch, you stupid. I got to go home early. Got to see my kid. Got to see my husband. Got my money. And I, a lot of people see what she's all about. I didn't attack the bitch. You would have expected it to be the other way around. But don't nobody question her about being on drugs or about doing shit. You feel what I'm saying? If I would have attacked her, she's on drugs. She's going under the jail. Do you see the double standards? It's, 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 it's bad. But somebody's got to deal with it, Carlos. And I'm the one that will, because at the end of the day, I don't give a I don't. I don't because I'm, I'm, I'm living my wildest dreams. I'm taking care of my husband and my daughter. I, I, I'm a married woman, I got a family. I make a lot of money. I give a lot of jobs to people. I have, when I'm on set, I got 100 people working. That's 100 people that's working under my umbrella that I'm paying because of my show. A lot of bitches can't say that, or a lot of people can't say that, but I'm the bad guy, and I'm out of control, and I'm this and I'm that. They never say the good things that I do, all the work. All the advice, all the teaching, everything that I do, they, that never, we never do this for that. <laughs> but we always do this. For anything outside of the ordinary that they think the princess do. It's sick. And it's disappointing. Because when do you stop pointing the fingers? When? Think about it. Think about it. When do people stop pointing the fingers? Well, it's what you said. It's the fact that, listen, you are somebody who is in this entertainment world that we've never seen. We've never seen. And I think because you have propelled your career to constantly reinvent yourself and constantly do things to where we're like, that's what she's doing next. When you have people in Hollywood like Issa Rae and Lee Daniels and the executive producers at The Real say, we Katori want- Katori Hall. Katori Hall from P-Valley. You, you were on P-Valley. There's people out there who really love you. And one thing that I've even realizing, and, and, this is, and I'm being honest with you, I'm no longer in this place where, ooh, but well, that's Clutch Pearls, you know, the fighting and stuff. I'm not this place where I'm like, if that's your reality, that's your reality. reality. Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscar. Is the Oscars ratchet? You know, but, but the thing about it is- It don't lot, matter what it is. But guess what? A lot of people 
were on Will Smith's side. I was. Okay. We I was. I, I, I endorsed that slap. <laughs> and then we see Bitch, this. Bitch, do it again. You need help? That help. Well, we don't need uh, <laughs> to do it again. We don't need but... no more charges on the Puerto Rican person. I'm telling you, I can't fart. If I fart, I might get a charge. And I will You know say... what I told this morning to somebody? I said, I'm going to slap the f you. And then I'm going to call the police on myself. Because I know you're a police asshole. And you're going to call them on me. So I'm going to slap you and I'm going to let you know I'm going to call them on myself. That's how serious I don't got. Because bitches be ready to call the popo on you. So it's like, bitch, I'm going to slap you because that's what you want. And I'm going to just get another charge. And it's all good. It's all good. If we got to keep getting charges for me to get, keep getting my respect, then that's just what we got to do. When it's all said and done, what do you want the Jocelyn Hernandez legacy to be? The legacy is already here. I'm immortal. I can die today, bitch, and I'm going to be known for the rest of the history of life. Y'all hoes heard me. <laughs> I can die today, and I'll be known for the rest of the history of fucking life. Nobody's done it like me. I can die today, baby, and I'm immortal. I've already made myself immortal. I've made myself immortal in 2012 when I'm a hip hop. Ain't no other bitch immortal like me, baby. Nobody. Nobody. Name him, I tell you lies. Name another immortal bitch like me. Bitch, I'm like mother come back. I never die. Like a cartoon. I'm gonna always be there. I did it. And the best thing about it is I learned how to get paid while doing it in perpetuity. A lot of people don't know that word. Y'all should Google that. I did it. Beautiful thing. Bad for them, good for me. And every day they wake up, they still gonna be talking about what I put down my throat, what I put in my nose, what I take down my throat, what I put in my ass, what I put in my pussy, what I put in my mouth. It's like, bitch, you get paid to know that? Is this your job? Do you get paid to know what the Puerto Rican princess do on a daily when she wakes up? Outside of getting money and taking care of body and keeping my husband in check. Like, hello? I have a great life. Maybe they should try to have a great life too. And they'll get off my dick. Or should I say my pussy? Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jocelyn Hernandez. <laughs> That's a wrap. I love you guys. Oh you my God. <laughs>